I made a film called Arvind Desai Ki Ajeeb Daastan, then I made a film called <coughs> Albert Pinto Gussa Kiyo Aata Hai, then Mohan Joshi Hazaru Saleem Nangne Pe Matro, etc. And then I have lots of documentaries and television series and back into documentaries, travelogues, and then finally into uh, this film. But if you see my work in films, I'm leading up to this actually. I didn't know I was leading up to this. I had no idea. Because in Albert Pinto, uh, there was a thing of this mill strike and, you know, and a labor union being smashed and lots of things happening. But Simon had the background, the idea of a minority, of, you know, the Christian community. That's linked in some kind of way. Then you have Mohan Joshi has her own. Then. Salim Nilangar is a precursor to this film, where a lot of things that have been said of him were actually mentioned in Salim Nilangar, which is... It's much more violent. It's a much more violent, much more angry, much more uh, provocative film. This is very quiet. This is, in the, the, it's, a, it's a kind of a requiem. It's a kind of epitaph of a nation. I was in a state of immense despair when I was making the film, primarily because I felt that if I make it at the time when the masters actually came down, I would be a bit angry, but I needed to reflect because it wasn't, it wasn't anger, it was to be able to see time in a, in, a, in a kind of way which is not angry, but it flows, it very gently flows. And uh, I had to, the idea of Nassim was primarily because I needed the idea of a young girl. Now a young girl by itself is incredibly vulnerable in our country. And a young Muslim girl makes that much more vulnerable, you know. Uh, and therefore, now you have this young girl called Nassim, and she is going to be bearing the brunt of history, not even knowing it. It's on a, on a very fragile shoulders. She'll be bearing the brunt of history. It is uh, an incredible experience because you, 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 try to, you try to understand it in its in its madness, in its, in, in its viciousness. And finally, you end up stunned because it's not the cruelty or the hate that's really manifest. It is the stupidity of it all, the incredible stupidity of it all. I had something very close to me, uh, which was right in front of me, which is a story, it was the relationship of my father and his granddaughter, that's my sister's daughter, and my father, and she had an incredible relationship. It was friendship of a kind which was amazing because he was an incredibly erudite man, incredibly well-read, a historian. But not just in Urdu and uh, English, it was, uh, it was French and Arabic and um, Chinese and. Latin American literature, and he was full of it, you know. And uh, he passed, and used to have these, used to have these things with my uh, niece. My, that's his granddaughter, and she never knew when he's whether he's pulling her leg or not. So there, I had that at the back of my head. So I just transposed that into a kind of story with a grandfather and a granddaughter, but keeping that story, my father and his granddaughter in mind. And that's when it began. And I needed to link up the past primarily because, like I said, it's a requiem. Uh, it's an epitaph. And I needed to talk about a past that was genteel. Now, is it romantic, that past? You mean there was nothing else in the past that was not corrosive and full of hate or anger? Of course, there must have been. But I chose to ignore it because I didn't require that. Is it, is it real, that past? I'm not so sure, but I hope it was. Is it fantasy? I, perhaps. Because the real is so terrifying now. It's tough. It's tough to smile. It's very difficult to smile. But when you are in these scoundrel times, and it's not here, it's across the world, how can you smile? It's tough, but you have to. You've got to live, otherwise, blow your brains out, my friend.
tough. But, and it's, it's on the shoulders of a, of a young girl. You know, it's, uh, will she be able to do it? I hope so. I hope so.